Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kellen here from Start Your Systems, and welcome back to another edition of Track Walk in MX Bikes, where today we're going to be playing the Moto Sandbox by RSK, Ruben Kilder, Rubes, so many different names that you may know him as. Uh, I feel like I probably know him best as Ruben Kilder because that was the name that uh, we knew him from in MX Simulator. And uh, yeah, he has created an absolute behemoth of a Moto Sandbox compound for us here today. So we're going to get into the history of it. We're going to play the track a little bit. And of course, before I start this, I do have to say that this is a paid track. It is $4 on the MX Bike shop page. Um, if you guys like to see these creators and what they do and what they put in MX Bikes, I strongly recommend that you actually do get these tracks and continue to support them because they do a lot of hard work to make these tracks awesome for us. So... That is just our little disclaimer to start this video. Let us do some laps on this compound. I'm going to do probably a majority of this video in third person. I know that some of you guys, um, you know, like the first person gameplay or feel like it's a little bit more realistic or, or what have you. But um, I've just been jumping back and forth between third and first, and I can't really find out what I like the best or what I want to do the best. Um, so we're just going to do third because honestly it's kind of fun to throw some naughty whips in third person and i think i'm going to do one lap on this national track and then go back to uh the garage because uh because i was in replay my bike shadow doesn't exist anymore so i need to make sure that works and so on and so forth okay enough about all that let's talk about this track it is a moto sandbox it is in florida it is in uh to be specific claremont florida which is right in the middle of florida kind of right maybe like 45 minutes outside of Orlando. Ooh, that was almost greasy. Um, but more or less between Orlando and Tampa to a degree. Um, you know, pretty close to like Disney World if you, you know, are from around that area or you know that area a little bit better. Uh, and the history of it is, I believe the original owner was Grant Langston. Uh, he had this facility when he was racing professionally and then all that stuff like that. And then eventually it became Ryan Villapoto's facility. Um, and Villapoto used it when he was a pro in racing and, 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 and all that stuff as well. And then it was called The Nest for a little while and eventually renamed to the Moto Sandbox. And I, I don't remember the exact owner's name. Uh, it's slipping my mind at the moment. But there is some gentleman that owns it. It is not owned by a team or, or anything like that. It's just some guy uh, that actually owns the facility now. And a lot of different people ride at it. Like I said, I'm going to go back to Pitts real quick uh, just to be able to see my shadow again. Groundhog's Day a little bit out here. There we go. There's my beautiful shadow. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of people ride at this track in real life. We're going to go ahead and do the uh, swamp loop right here. Oh, I didn't realize those cones had collisions. Darn it. I would have probably chosen a different track if I knew that. Uh, let's do the swamp loop next here. Just did a lap on the main track. We're going to do the swamp lap. There are eight tracks to try to figure out on this facility, and I'm going to try to show them off to uh, you guys as best as I possibly can. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of guys ride there. I think probably the biggest names that you would associate with Moto Sandbox the, the, these days, I uh, can't even speak, is uh, Ken Roxon. Ken Roxon, Alex Martin, two guys that uh, trained at Moto Sandbox quite a lot. There's a lot of other guys like uh, Joey Savacci is written there. Um, yeah, I just, <clears throat> a lot of guys. Uh, it's becoming more and more common, I feel like, these days that teams will have some sort of compound, like Baker's Factory is the KTM Husky Gas Gas situation in Florida. Um, obviously in Georgia, the Star Racing Facility, which was the Goat Farm. Um, Justin Barsha has his own track in Tallahassee. There is uh, the 83 compound, which I believe is now a majority owned by the Lawrence Brothers. And uh, so they train at the 83 com uh, compound, which used to be Chad Reed's compound. There's just a freaking ton of these compounds and tracks and stuff like that in Florida. As This is uh, completing a lap there on the Swamp Loop. Um, they're everywhere. They really are. There's so many of them. Jack Chambers has a place now that Chase Sexton and Justin Starling and uh, Kyle Chisholm, I think, rides at. Tyler Rattray used to have a place down there, but then that got shut down last year. Uh, Tim Ferry still, I think, has his house down there. There's just so many of these compounds in Florida and uh, a lot of pros and stuff trained there. And Moto Sandbox, I feel like, is arguably maybe the most famous Florida compound. Uh, it has been featured in many movies. It's been featured in many videos. It is, at this point in time, maybe the most like accessible one as well because it is not a team facility. It is one where riders go to train. Like 83 Compound is probably pretty accessible in that same regard. Uh, and I more mean like to media members or to uh, industry personnel and stuff like that to go to. Like Baker's Factory, like they shut it down. Like if you don't work for Red Bull or 
KTM or something like that. You don't really have any business being at Baker's Factory. Um, so, you know, Star and a couple of those places, they're, they're a little bit more open. Uh, and Moto Sandbox, I feel like it's pretty open to allowing, you know, people to come by and, and see what's going on out there. So um, you definitely have seen this facility, I promise you, in, in either video form or movie form or something like that. And now we get to play it in MX Bike. So this is really, really cool what Ruben has done. I think he's done an incredible job with these national tracks because while they are challenging and they do present uh, a unique uh, flow to them, they're pretty much exactly what I wanted to see out of this track, which is something that if you ride it a lot and you train on it a lot and you wear in the ruts really well and stuff like that, you will eventually build a track uh, with the terrain deformation that is challenging and makes you actually kind of work for it a little bit. But on its base level, without any road really tearing this track apart, it's not that difficult to ride. Um, it's got some decent little braking bumps and chop here and there. Uh, it's got a few big jumps, which are pretty fun to get turned down on like that one. Um, but the ruts will flow and develop as you ride it more, which is really you know why it's a good reason that it's also a track to maybe get online with your, your mates or your buddies and, and uh, you know have some sessions and feel like you're getting a little bit better at the game and stuff like that so yeah I think he just did a really tip-top job of making this track easy fast fun and also technically challenging all at the same time and uh, I, I recommend that uh, you guys check these tracks out because of that but it's not just these tracks there is also supercross tracks we're gonna go check those out in a second just gonna finish up one more lap here um, we kind of did the full loop and now I guess we did the swamp loop and then it's turning into the full loop um, this is you know the little extension part that I did the second time through back there was called the pro loop so there's the main track and then there's the pro loop if you do the second extension there's the swamp loop if you do the first extension and then there's just the swamp track which I did the the second lap through and then the full track like I said I've already done so there's a lot of different options and variables I don't know how uh, common it is that all those options at this facility are even rideable I think sometimes they just become a little bit overgrown and then eventually they take the dozer out and try to fix it up a little bit but uh, I don't think that it's a, a regular thing that those tracks are super rideable oh my gosh I almost greased that um, so yeah this is the main track this is the national track etc etc wanted to actually jump into the uh, little shed that they have right here I have myself never been to the Moto Sandbox. I was going to go there when I was in Florida last year, but eventually uh, my daughter got sick because we were actually there for a family vacation, but I was also trying to work and I was gonna go to the Moto Sandbox one day, got it all coordinated, then my daughter got sick. It's gonna actually meet, I think Zach Osborne there. Um, can't remember who it was that I was gonna meet there, but haven't been myself. I have been to the 83 compound. And uh, like I, I, all I can tell you is that all these tracks in Florida look very much the same. They use kind of the same clay uh, to build these supercross tracks. And then the sand and the dirt and all that stuff in the Florida, you know, kind of swampy dirt is pretty much the exact same. So from that regard, from my experience being at 83 compound, I can tell you that the aesthetics of this track are dead on. The trees all around the outside of it is pretty much exactly what you see when you're actually there. Um, probably actually a little bit more trees, although I believe the 80, the the Moto Sandbox has a little bit less trees around it, but a lot of these facilities have just a ton of trees around them because to a degree, a lot of these compounds do still have neighbors nearby. So you, you put those trees around so that they don't hear you and uh, you can ride and train at your Mary's glory and not feel like you're being bombarded by people complaining to the city that you are making too much noise like they did a lot when Chad Reed lived at his uh, compound. So, um, but anyway, like I said, aesthetics look good. The tracks are quite a bit of fun. I am not very good at Supercross right now, so that's why I'm going to struggle a little bit on these tracks. But hopefully we can bust out some of these main lines, like this one out of this corner. You triple in. If I click into third, you quad. And then you would, I think if you're on a 450, you could quad out of that. And then on a 250, I can only bust this triple single into the sand. I think there's also a, a cheeky little line right here to hop over this like wall thing. But again, my talent levels don't exist to that level in this game to be able to do that. So we're just going to clip the wall and have a nice little trip to Indonesia. All right, let's finish up this track here. This is the South SX track or the SX South as he has it listed. So we're going to do a lap on that. And then we're going to jump over here and do a lap on the SX North track. And then eventually a lap on the SX Daytona track because he has multiple iterations of these tracks on this facility. Ah! keep making this mistake um if you frequent the mx simulator or mx bikes communities both 
Uh, you may have already seen this track once before um, in MX Sim. I don't know the exact uh, national track layout being the exact same, but somebody did make this exact Moto Sandbox Supercross uh, set of tracks in MX Simulator. I don't remember who or, or when. I feel like it was like maybe 2021, 2011. I'm getting old at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, so you may have seen these tracks already. You may have played these tracks already. Uh, in MX bikes, I feel like these tracks have really, really good flow to them when you actually get it dialed in and you're not Pavoso hopping your way into corners and stuff like that. And um, I don't I don't think I've played many Ruben Supercross tracks. I know that he did that, that Houston one that was really popular a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. A lot of people really played that one. Um, but I feel like he does a really solid job of making jumps that have uh, you know the right length of transitions between them, the right height, the right tra uh, you know transition to face. I think the only thing that I would say is a slight detriment is he peaks out some things a little bit too much. So if you come up short, like you're mega screwed. But I think that that kind of adds to the challenge of it, right? Like it is supercross, it's not supposed to be easy. So I like that it's still technical and challenging in that in that regard. And uh, I think he does a pretty good job with the way that he ends up building his tracks. So definitely. Uh, want to give him credit for that. This is the Daytona loop, and uh, a lot of people in these Florida compounds always do this around the Daytona Supercross. They'll add like a little extension to a Supercross track that can get naughty and chewed up and rough. And honestly, sometimes they'll just pre-build it with a lot of rough and stuff like that to mimic, of course, the Daytona Supercross, which they all race eventually. So you have to kind of mimic it in some regard. We're not going to bust that quad. We're going to land off the track. Um, but this is the SX North track into the uh, Daytona Supercross section and uh, I feel like that all kind of looks exactly like what I remember it as I, I think like I said I think that this compound has changed up just a little bit since uh, you know this iteration of the track was made usually speaking compounds of this nature will have an updated set of Supercross tracks every single year and for the most part they'll usually mimic a replica track from real life so that like you know Houston or something like that they'll have a replica of so when they go to Houston for the real race the riders feel like oh yes I already know this I know the lines and I feel like uh, I've been training on this and I'm not training on something that has nothing to do with something that I might race on so it usually gets updated the you know this track has uh, two supercross pads as they would call it um, so I would assume that both pads get updated every single year I don't know what they technically have going on right there right now but uh, yeah, they do frequently update those. I want to try to bust this quad at least once, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. And I'm definitely not going to get it right here because I'm not carrying enough speed. So we'll go back down to the SX South loop because I wanted to do a little bit better of a lap than I had put down on this track right here. But yes, overall, fantastic work by Ruben. Um, he actually reached out to me and uh, said, hey, man, did you check out my track? And I was like, you know what? I, I really have. But uh, the way that my schedule works, I'm going to get a little Kevin Hart on you guys here. The way that my schedule works, I got to check in the savings, you know. Um, but the reality is with my real job working at Racer X kind of tying me up sometimes, I don't always get a chance to, like, download these awesome tracks and play them same day and release a video same day. So a lot of the way that these track walk videos and other things happen is I'll build like a backlog of like here's the tracks that I want to play here's tracks that I've been eyeing up as uh you know tracks that I want to do a review on talk about whatever and eventually I get around to recording videos on them but I also have to get half decent at the tracks on them because I am not a regular everyday MX bikes player I jump between every single motocross game to kind of cover the whole genre of it and uh, because of that I need to like take the time to learn the track get good at it so that for a video, it's not completely atrocious to watch, even though this one has not been the best, but that is just kind of my workflow process. Sometimes I understand that you guys might be like, well, uh, you know, 14 other people already made videos on these tracks. I get it. Like uh, you should go watch those if you want to watch, ex you know, specifically MX Bikes content, but we try to cover the gamut of everything here. So sometimes I fall a little bit behind on some of these track walks, but I always like to get to them when I possibly can. Um, and I think honestly, my goal is to try to bring back the flavor on SYS of we are more or less like a sim first channel like we not MX simulator specifically but I like the simulation motocross games more than the arcade games not to say I don't like the arcade games I still get down on them and have a lot of fun and I've uh, met some great people through those games but you know I come from a sim background and 
played the same motocross sim game for a very long time and now I've transitioned over to bikes and I want to do more content on that. So I think you're actually probably going to start seeing a little bit more frequent bikes and sim content every week with a, a little bit less smattering in of the console side of stuff. Hopefully that's a transition you guys will like. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below if you like or dislike that and what else you want to see on the channel because even though we still are growing and reaching heights that I never thought I still like to keep it very simple and on a base level try to get to know every single person that comments or likes our videos or subscribes or what have you because I think you guys are awesome people and have great taste in video games so that's going to do it for us checking out the Moto Sandbox by Ruben Kilder and MX Bikes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, give it a like. Give it a little bit of a sub, perhaps, as we get closer to the 100K mark. And also, like I said, go to mxbikeshop.com and you know check out these tracks. Download more tracks than just Ruben's track. There's a lot of great tracks over there. We're going to be reviewing more of them coming up here soon. Um, and honestly, I'd recommend checking out quite a lot of them. They, they have some great tracks that are over there in that database. And uh, of course, it helps the community uh, grow and keep those track builders building tracks for many years to come. So uh, yeah, this is Moto Sandbox by Ruben Kilder. Thanks for stopping by watching another video here on Start Your Systems. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. So long for now.